back to the incompleteness theorem. Um, I, I kind of want to discuss more on like where you get your ontology from um, and how it's related to the incompleteness theorem. Because, uh, you know, just to reiterate, the theorem states there are, there are two theorems. The first one is any formal system has truths uh, that cannot be proven within that formal system. And the second one is that this system itself can't prove its own inconsistency. Now, its own consistency, right? It's, its own cons uh, consistency, sorry. Um, of course, uh, that said like that, that sounds very abstract, but then, and then there's like the the myriad, you know, books like uh, Geta Lesher Bach by Hofstadter, yeah. uh, which again, highly speculative. There are all these different uh, theories of mind, theories on AI computation. So, well, to to put the question plainly, uh, how how is it that, you know, as you call it, this this incompleteness theorem was a phenomena and, and a phenomenon in the 20th century. And what why are there such grave uh, philosophical implications? And then maybe the the latter part of that you could even answer how much the theorem has had influence on your own ontology, let's say. Right. Oh, great questions. Yeah. So I mean, the way I think about it is, uh, okay, the incompleteness theorem, Gödel's theorem, tells us that it's impossible for us to ever give to describe a complete account of what's true. We can't write down, we cannot have a computable procedure for enumerating all and only the true statements of mathematics. That's really how I think about what the theorem is saying. It's saying that truth is too complicated for us to describe in its entirety. And so any theory that we can write down is going to be only part of it. But there's lots of theories that we can write down. We can write down the piano theory. We can write down Zermelo's theory. We can write down category theory. We can write down type theory. We can write down all these different theories that are attempting to express what's true in the, in the foundations of mathematics or a kind of foundational system. But the point is that none of them is ever going to be the full story because that's impossible. That's what the incompleteness theorem tells us. We cannot ever describe some foundational setup that's got the whole story in it because for any formal system, there's going to be true statements in that system that we can't prove in that system. Regardless of what it is, I think it's this kind of sweeping claim. And so what it means is that Mathematics is essentially creative because whatever we think we know, well, there's going to be more things that we have to still figure out and, and the, the setup won't tell us. And so it's a kind of prediction that Gödel predicted the independence phenomenon of set theory by which everything is independent of ZFC and, and, and each other. And, and furthermore, it's not just that those statements are independent, but that they're not even settled. Uh, I mean, the consistency strength of the statements is, is a kind of hierarchy. That's the content of the second incompleteness theorem is that because the statement doesn't even prove its own consistency, then there are these kind of statement, other statements that do prove the consistency of that previous one. So that the Ger second Gödel's theorem predicts that there's a kind of vast tower of theories of enormous height which are which are increasing in this consistency strength. So no, none of the theories can even prove the consistency of the higher ones, but the higher ones can prove the consistency of the lower ones. And this was something that we observed directly in the large cardinal hierarchy of set theory, because we have these large cardinals, inaccessible cardinals, and Molo and hypermolo and and uh, uh, Ramsey cardinals and so on, measurable cardinals, strong, super strong, strongly compact, super compact, huge, you know, and so on. So there's this enormous hierarchy of these strong axioms of infinity, and, th and they instantiate this predicted phenomenon because none of the theories, none of the large cardinals can prove the consistency of the higher ones, and all of the higher ones always prove the consistency of the lower ones in a very robust manner. And, and so Gödel's theorem told us that, look, there's going to be this hierarchy of theories. 
that are increasing in consistency strength. And we found it. The large cardinal hierarchy is exactly like that. And, and there's no top to it. There can't ever be a top to it. We cannot describe an unbounded pattern to it because that would just be a theory that we would be describing and that theory would be inadequate according to the incompleteness theorem. So, so there's no way we can finish the project of the large cardinal hierarchy. I mean, we found this extremely um, elaborate hierarchy of axioms in the large cardinal hierarchy, but it's impossible for us to sort of finish it precisely again because of the incompleteness theorem. So, so this is why I say that the um, uh, any serious foundational study has to be undertaken in light of the incompleteness phenomenon, because it, otherwise you, you're missing the main phenomenon that you cannot do it. You cannot describe a complete theory that, that's going to be foundational. Um, uh, that's yeah so this is how i think about the incompleteness theorem is leading to this extremely important principle that governs any kind of approach to foundations of mathematics that they will always be incomplete and inadequate and they will always come in these towers these hierarchies of theories and so if you're if you're going to undertake some philosophical investigation in the foundations of mathematics or the philosophy of mathematics um then you should be thinking in terms of incompleteness and hierarchies of theories rather than the single description that's solving it all. <laughs>